Hi, this is Eric. Today's video is about Vision Shield for Arduino Portenta family, which is launched recently. Uh, this board is not working standalone, so you have to have Arduino Portenta for now. I know there is much talk about the price of the Arduino Portenta. Uh, this Vision Shield is not cheap either. Uh, it's $47.15 in the US. Uh, maybe you are not a big fan of this, but let's see what we can do with this. Maybe it can help lots of parts of the project you need to solve. I'm going to show you a couple of the official examples of OpenMV with Vision Shield. Let's take a look at the spec it has simply first. The official Arduino store says this is professional computer vision, directional audio detection, Ethernet, and JTAG for Arduino Portenta. There are SD card slots in the back of the PCB and Ethernet connector, external pins for the JTAG, camera module, and two microphones. This is the first add-on board for Arduino Portenta family, so it's connecting through two 80-pin high-density connectors. Here's a little problem. I don't know if it's the right direction because there is no notch for directionality. I hope this part will be revised in the future. Of course, I can tell by looking at it, but I think it will be better to make a difference just in case. Anyway, this is the right combination. Let's talk about the camera model on this board. This camera model is HM01B0 from HiMax. According to the description, it's an ultra-low power CMOS image sensor that enables the integration of an array on camera for computer vision applications such as gestures, intelligent ambient light, and proximity sensing, tracking, and object identification. Wow, it sounds like this camera has a purpose. The active pixel is 320 pixel by 320 pixel. Well, I hope it's over more than 1020 pixel by 768 pixel, which is XGA, but it's not. The maximum frame rate is 51 FPS at the full resolution, and 60 FPS at 320 pixel by 240 pixel, which is QVGA. One thing we have to know is the color filter array is monochrome and bio. The reason why they designed this way is to roll the price of the camera module and do image processing effectively, I guess. Unlike color sensors, monochrome sensors do not require the mosaicing to create the final image. The values recorded at each photo site effectively just become the values at each pixel. As a result, the monochrome sensor is able to achieve a slightly higher resolution. Uh, in a color camera, the presence of a buyer filter can contribute to decrease the performance in terms of optical resolution of the system. Also, the demosaicing algorithm can be introduced to errors in color reconstruction. So, if the color information is not necessary, a monochrome sensor should be preferred for image processing. Before starting OpenMV, you need to update the bootloader for your Portenta H7 if yours is not the latest version. As shown on the screen, my bootloader version was 15. After updating, it became 21 now. The way of the bootloader update is very simple and has a link in the description below. The OpenMV project is about creating low-cost, extensible, Python-powered machine vision modules. Actually, I never used the OpenMV for my project. So I take this opportunity to see how Python can be programmed for this camera and share some examples with you guys. I'm not going to create any project today, but load the built-in examples. Uh, let's start with the hello world, yeah. I just loaded the hello world example from the OpenMV IDE. The first problem is here. My camera module only supports monochrome, so I cannot use RGB format. Let me change it to grayscale. Now I'm sure it works. On the right side of the window, you can see the incoming images from the camera. The zoom is enabled on purpose because the camera's basic resolution is too small. Uh, there's a real-time histogram of the wrapped color space from the incoming image. It looks good. As you can see, it's black and white, but the image looks very clear. It's hard to believe it's QVGA resolution. The next example is blob detection. Uh, this is about telling the presence and the position of the objects in the camera image. 
The block detection algorithm allows cutting areas in a digital image that differ in properties such as brightness or color compared to surrounding areas. These errors are called blobs. What's interesting is it can detect another object inside the object that was found already. Uh, seems like the black objects are hard to detect. All my fingers are recognized separately, maybe no. For this, the finger detection model should be in there. Uh, perhaps in this case, it was easy to distinguish because each finger was refractive. Uh, this example is the face tracking. When it found the face for the very first time, it tries to extract the key points from the found object. The circles on the image are indicating all key points the algorithm found. After that, it continuously matches the first set of the key points with the incoming images. If greater than 5 matching points are found, it recognizes that it has found the target, and then draw the cross on it. As you can see, the face tracking works well. The thing which is inconvenient is the FPS is not that high in the face tracking. I know it's doing a lot, but it's much more than expected. This one is about following black lines. It has found and marked the black lines that it couldn't find properly in the blob detection. The smartphone screen is showing the grayscale image to test the amount of black the algorithm is looking for. I think it's accepting up to dark gray anyhow. This one is about finding a circle. After finding a circle, it returns the central coordinates, x, y, and radius. It is displaying the circle on the screen with this information. It seems to be some difficulty because the vessel part of my watch being tested is not clear. Uh, this example is for detecting and reading barcodes. Uh, barcode information can be found in the serial terminal at the left bottom of the screen. The average FPS is 9.7 at QVGA resolution. The barcodes need to be very close to the camera to find it properly. Finally, here is the canny edge detection example. Anyone interested in computer vision knows the, what the canny edge is. In a nutshell, it's a technique to extract useful structural information from different vision objects and dramatically reduce the amount of data to be processed. It has been widely applied in various computer vision systems. And this algorithm is composed of five steps. Noise reduction, gradient calculation, the maximum suppression, 
on double the sword, edge tracking by hysteresis. Please Google it for detailed explanation. It's massive content. This example demonstrates the visualization of the histogram of oriented gradient. The hog descriptors are mainly used to describe the structure, shape, and appearance of an object in an image, or making them excellent descriptors for object classification. However, since hog captures local intensity gradient and edge directions, it also makes for good texture descriptor. Uh, personally, I haven't been able to find the right project for the Arduino Portenta H7 yet. Uh, I want this vision shield to make many projects possible. This is all for today's video. I hope you like this video too. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.